What's up, Go Enthusiasts? Welcome to my recap of Game 3 in the recent Chuja Lanky Cup Best of 3 Grand Finals to decide who wins the first Chuja Lanky Cup World Championship. Between Shinjun So and Guja Hao, we just saw in Game 2 Guja Hao attack Shinjun So and kill him in the middle game. This time he has black, Shinjun So has white. Usually, an attacking style player prefers to play black. However, in uh, Chinese tournaments, the Komi is 7.5, which you typically consider to be just a little too much. Maybe 7 is fair, or 6.5. Um, so I imagine both players may be happy with what color they have in this final match. You can see in the opening, Guja Hao plays a very aggressive and fast enclosure in the upper left. And they play the same original pincer the one space high that we saw before, but this time Shinjin So jumps out. It's always been popular. Last time we saw Shinjin So play an enclosure on this side, instead the jump this time should also be fine. Shinjin So continues here. He's trying to approach this corner, gain strength to attack that one stone, so Guja Hao pincers, defending that stone, naturally. Shinjin So jumps. Guja Hao has to defend his group in the middle here, keeping pressure on both of these two white groups, and Shinjin So plays a common Tesuji in the corner. We know about this one. When you approach the two space high enclosure from the 3 4, then you get to attach like this afterwards. The reason why it works is not shown in the game. Guja Hao just backs off. If it goes like this instead, you can see. With Wei having so many stones here and being able to link up to that cutting stone, these two stones are in trouble. So that's why Guja Hao plays a more patient move, just defending in the 3-3. And Shinjin So can block like this, allowing Guja Hao to Hane at the head of two stones. If you get Hane at the head of two stones, you do not want to get Hane on the other head of your two stones. So he needs to play the Tiger's Mouth in the corner like this, and then play here. So now if Guja Hao would just capture... Shinjin So could dominate the center. So Guja Hao plays on the left side. Shinjin So plays here. It's a common Joseki in the upper left. We've seen this plenty of times before. Shinjin So has made a base. Guja Hao has gotten a large potential territory in the upper left. And he chooses to come and approach the bottom left. Shinjin So plays here. This move is a fifth line shoulder hit. <laughs> Reminiscent of AlphaGo, maybe, but not really because this is directly against a reinforced black shape. This isn't just a shoulder hit in the middle of nowhere, but black already has three stones here. It's supposed to be strong. This move indicates that Shinjin So had studied this exact position uh, as a fusaki. Fusaki meaning the whole opening, not just one corner is studied and prepared for. That's usually what we do is a joseki, but this is a fuseki preparation where he knew if he plays like this in the upper right corner and that in the up, uh, upper left corner, and gets this whole position on the top side of the board, then he can play this move. So what's so special about this move? Why is it indicating Fuseki preparation? Well, we wouldn't play like this normally if we didn't know what was going on very precisely, because black can just push up and cut somehow. And then we're going to have to take care of this one stone and those two stones in the corner. When you have to take care of two groups at, at the same time, it's very risky. And in general, it's easy to do things wrong. The reason why it can still be good is that black has also several weaknesses that he has to tend to. He has to make sure not to collapse with his group on the top side, and he has to allow white to play some sente moves against this group on the right side whenever. For example, this push, if black would not answer and white gets to Hane, it's way too big. So white does have some reinforcement here. That means this kind of move might be possible, but it's just on the edge of possible. Uh, that means it's quite uncomfortable for black, actually. Because if he pushes through, and cuts, that's Shinjin So's preparation. Shinjin So definitely knows what's going on in that fight. But if he doesn't push through and cut, and he just falls back, that's too passive. Because this was just barely possible. If you just fall back and let your opponent have it, uh, white was too efficient. So Guja Hao solves this problem by playing away. He says, you know, if you continue there by yourself, it's actually not that big. If white just plays one more move and makes this area relatively strong, that's fine. So he plays away. He leans here, he presses... He approaches the bottom right corner. White answers all of these things. If white would tenuki himself and play in the upper right area, then he sort of loses his uh, power in the sense that he's prepared for when black plays first. Like he, he already looked with AI about what he's supposed to do if black plays first here. So if he plays first here and just plays some normal move, it, it loses his preparation and it's nothing special that he gains for that. So he's going to try to keep this position to keep pressure on black. Like, hey, how are you going to play there? It's not very easy, right? 
Black eventually plays here. Anway pushes, preparing to block, and Black cuts. So Guja Hao eventually just had to come into the fight. Like, if So prepared this, yes, but if he just leaves it forever, someday Guja Hao has to do something. Because someday it would actually, like, if all the rest of the big moves on the board are taken, it's just big to continue over there, and Shinjin So would take a lead. So Guja Hao says, now is my time, I have to start the fight. Shinjin So plays the Atari here and connect. And this is very scary. Because uh, it's splitting the black shape. So black now has to take care of these two stones, those two stones, these two stones, still the group over there. And it leaves this one cutting stone open. So it looks like black should be able to Atari it and try to capture that stone. Or if not capture, then at least attack the group on the upper right. But that's not what Guja Hao does. He plays the turn. If he played here, then Shun Shun So had prepared to play this move. And then... We get a situation where although Guja Hao can try to capture that one, he's going to be very busy on the right side as well. And this is the kind of fighting that Shin Jun So exactly was very prepared for and knew exactly how to play. So Guja Hao instead chose to turn, therefore making this whole one group relatively surrounded. So we can connect here, but this group, even though it's connected, is still in trouble. However, Black's group on the top side is also in deep trouble. So Black can't continue this around because White would try to capture these two stones and Black would lose the fight. Black needs to jump to the top side now, make sure that his group there should be relatively safe, and keep the pressure on for that White group. That White group has to run now, but Black can try to double attack it between attacking this group and attacking the three stones at the same time. Black couldn't just, you know, cut through here. He would be double attarried. That's why this move is threatening the push and cut here, and at the same time threatening these three stones. I thought here, Shun Jin So would play the bamboo drone, because bamboos are very good, and after the bamboo, Black can't exactly capture these three stones, but Shun Jin So instead found a very nice move, the wedge here, the angle wedge. We don't really have a good term for this shape in English, but it does happen pretty often. Basically, he's making a table shape rather than the bamboo to brashly claim he, he could basically get the bamboo anyway. And if black simply connects without doing anything, white is connected out. There's no way for black to push through and cut anymore. And white could save these three stones, and this black group in the center would be getting in trouble. As at the same time, the black group on the top side gets in trouble. White's flow, very good. That's why Black had to break the bamboo, like this, and then play here. So now Black is threatening a cut on the top side. So it's trying to make some kind of Mia here, where Black will say, hey, you can save those three stones, but if you do, then I'll push through here and attack the other group. Shinjutsu saves the three stones. And Black plays this one. Why didn't he cut through? Then White could play this move. And the squeeze in the center is so painful. But if you don't allow the squeeze, if you answer somehow, the way it has a net here. So at this moment, as black, you'd want to play this kind of move, but white maybe will try to get this kind of squeeze, and oh, if this would happen and you didn't have any severe follow-up on the top side right now, it would be a disaster. So before black commits to cutting, he tries to get this move in sente first. Now if white answers, then black can cut, and the net doesn't work anymore. That's why Shin Shin So, realizing that Guja Hao has this uh, two-pronged attack coming, plays his own. Peeping here intends to save these stones on the top side by capturing the black stones on the top side. Guja Hao plays the turn here, because if you would connect, then White could play this bamboo, and that stick on the top side is eyeless. So even though Black can push through here, White can probably make some kind of cut. And eventually, the capturing race between the white group in the upper right corner and the black stick on the top side should become something like a seki. <laughs> because they have so many shared liberties on the O line, it's going to be really difficult for black to show that white can't get enough liberties outside to be able to race that, where black will be obligated to take all of these. And similarly to white, you know, if white is obligated to take all of these points, it's pretty likely that black will be able to fill in from the outside as well. So if this is likely going to be a seki, then 
the outside black is what matters. It seems like between who's getting attacked here, white is more attacking these two outside black groups and black is attacking white. And so that means this is unsatisfying from a position where black originally pushed and cut trying to gain initiative. So that's why black pushed through here. He wants to take a base on the top side and at the same time keep the pressure here and still threaten to cut through and attack the top. It seems to make sense, but white can play here. And because black committed harder to emphasizing on these stones becoming weak, when he turned here, he left open still the push on the top side at N17. And suddenly it's come to a situation where if black tries to cut from the center, white can take that. And if black plays here, then white can connect in the center. And either way, the fighting seems so good. So black cuts through like this, but white plays here. And what Gujiha must have been hoping for is not what he played. He should have wanted to play here. Then the problem is white can play this move. If black answers, then white can block like this. And black cannot cut. Because since white hasn't exchanged his cut yet, white has enough liberties to capture the black on the top side. So when black plays this peep and white plays here, black has to trade now. Black has to push through. But white can make the cut and take the corner. Now we come to a situation where the black group on the top side still doesn't have two clear eyes. White should be able to save himself in the corner, and the black shape on the outside doesn't look clean at all. So this fighting is very much not good for black. Then what can he do? He can only play here. This is actually a skill which separates Guja Hao from the top 50 players in the world. Actually, all the top pros are really good at fighting, really good at reading, really good at positional judgment, all of that. But one of the hardest skills in Go for even the top professionals to have is the skill to know when to give up. It's so hard to admit that you made a mistake and just let it pass and not bury yourself further into the fighting, make a fighting that's a, a little bit worse but more complicated. It's so tempting to do that. But this way, Guja Hao allows White to capture the entire top side and everybody who knows anything about Go knows that that area is too big. That that is too much territory for white for what black got. That's so big, right? But white is only leading by like four or five points now. And Guja Hao can try to catch that up. He made a couple of mistakes. Basically, his uh, attack on those three stones was too urgent. He emphasized too much on keeping them weak. And when white could just save, then he gained initiative. So he could gain initiative towards all the other weaknesses. But Guja Hao can patiently continue the game from here, and try to catch back up. He plays the jump. The way you should use an influence like this when you want to catch up is to threaten to have an area which is too big for the number of stones that you have. So you can't play some patient move, something like this. This area is not too big for the number of stones. When black has that many stones, it's okay for white to allow black to have that much. This game would become very easy for white. But when Gujiha plays here, Shinjin So can take the corner. This is a common move to try to reduce, but Guja Hao will continue to shoulder hit and jump. If he gets all of this, that's a little bit too much for how many stones he had. So Shinjin So is obligated to come in and try to reduce it. Something like this. He's like, hey, Black, if you just fall back here at N8, that's like fair. That's like not too much. That's like just as much as you deserve for the number of stones that you have once you've played there. And I can reduce from this side too. I'll let you have that whole thing. And since white has the top side and some corner, it should be good for white. So Guja Hao says, no. <laughs> he plays from this side. Actually, this kind of attacking is very counterintuitive for professional players because this stone can hardly make territory later. There's no way over here there's going to be a big territory for black. Like white is already strong there, strong there. There's nothing for black to do. All that this move means is, wait, you can save your group here, but I will restrict your movement. Whichever way you go, you can't make very much space. That's what this move means. This is where white would go to try to make some space in the center. Gujia House says, no, you won't have space. I will fight you here. And that's the proper way to use this kind of an influence. Jinjin So just jumps. And Gujia Hao jumps here. It would be unacceptable for Wade to jump to the side. In general, jumping on the side is better than jumping in the center. And so Shinjin So has to try to make some shape. 
in the center. He's restricted from going to the side. He's been a little bit restricted from going to the center, but he can try to attach, and this is a common good move to make eye shape. What's not common is Black's response. Normally we should play a Hanei on the outside, but he plays a Hanei on the inside. What am I talking about? Typically we consider this, uh, whatever you have a weak group swimming in the center, that's the main area of fighting. When you play stones, which will be uh, at least partially pointed away from the main area of fighting, that's an outside stone. So this stone, it has some value in attacking this weight, but it also has some value over here. So normally we should play like that, because an inside stone, an inside Hane, has only value towards the fight at hand. If you could play to have value later and value now, or only value now, normally we should take the value later too. But in this situation, as I said, there's no territory over there. There's nothing that Black wants over there. So that was never Black's intention. Black's intention was to restrict the white movement, make it hard for Shinshu So to make it shape. It was not to generally establish some influence over here. That's that's useless. If this would happen, then Shinshu So could make some shape. This is a common variation. However it would happen, white is clearly getting moves to defend his group, and black getting moves that will be useless. So the Hanai inside. It's actually very rare. Normally we should not play a Hanai inside. Usually it's a bad shape because white can cut, and the black stones become so weak. Black knew this was coming, he read carefully, he knew he could play Atari here, and push here. Then we have two white groups. And there's no way that this stone can be captured, the ladder doesn't work, that black stone is breaking the ladder nicely. There's no way that these black two stones can be captured. But if black can take this whole area, including those stones, that would be way too big. So white has to save these two stones. But if black can take the whole bottom side, including those two stones, that looks like that would be too big. So maybe white has to save both? <laughs> if you have to save both, it becomes really hard to play. And this is exactly what Gujaha wanted. This is how to catch up in a game where you have an influence. You fight, you restrict their movement, and you show them, hey, you have to save that, but it's unclear where you have to go to save that. So show me where you want to go, and I'll let you go to the valueless area. That's the point of black's attacking. White runs like this. And it means that he's putting a lot of pressure on that one black cutting stone and trying to run out to the center. Black saves his cutting stone. White plays here. It means that black is forced to play an empty triangle, but there's a downside too. It also means that white is a little bit more committed to handling these cutting stones. If you would let them die now, a lot of the time this exchange will actually just really increase the power that black has attacking the white group in the center. But it's an empty triangle, so for now, it's still safe enough for Shinjin So. He can play the peep here, and Atari this way. And what he's going to try to do is create some space in the center. If he can create some eye space, make a base by just throwing some stones around, then he can save this group. And if he saves this group and breaks this whole area, even if black can take this whole area, there's still some options for white to reduce. It may not be too big. Remember, white has this much on the top side. It's so much. <laughs> that's all white territory. So white connects here. That's going to be sente. Otherwise, white could try to bust through that black shape. Black needs to connect like this, and white peeps. So white is trying to actively create his space in the center. He's showing, hey, black, you have some cutting point. Then I can keep pressure on your bottom side, on your right side, all of that. It's scary for black. He blocks. So black is already outlining the bottom side. He's saying, hey, I took a big territory move. You can continue to save your group in the center. And Shinjin So does. He connects here. This, um, it was not really possible for black to push through because that would just sort of feed white some space in the center. But to connect itself creates the possibility to push and cut. And that gives White a lot more pressure that he can put on these three stones if he plays anything on the side, and that he can put when he Hanes into the bottom side. So this is a very, very active way of defending from Shinjin So. It also means, of course, he'll get a little bit more space here if he would play a big move outside. Then even though Black Push and Cut is not that good, just the push can reduce his space. So this is White asking for the most space, the most pressure on Black. Black plays here. Breaking the bamboo. 
And this move was glorious. A really, really good move. You see, there's an easy way to respond to this that I would do in a blitz game and also in a long game, which is not what Shinjin So does. He plays here. But I would play this one if I had two seconds on my clock. Just take a tiger's mouth, and normally there shouldn't really be anything in this side. But Gujiha had a plan. He was going to play the Hane, and they cut. And this looks stupid, because when white plays here, white is so much stronger in the corner, you actually did have some Aji to do endgame there and stuff like that, and now that's all gone. But what black gains is this. Where if white answers the Atari, and it's a really big move, black is now connected in Sente. And then he can launch an attack on the white group, and all that, that I said about this white stone, putting pressure on all the black stones on either side, it doesn't really work if black is connected in Sente. So Shinjin So said, oh, I see what you're doing when you play this one. You want to gain the most power that you can towards this cutting point. But when I play here, he's right, he can still cut. And there's nothing exactly that black can do to prevent it, right? But Black just plays here. He just fixes the cut by himself in apparent Gote. Except there's a difference now. Because Black has exchanged this, he's created a cut in white shape. And Shinji So thinks here. He thinks for a long time. Almost all of his remaining main time went into this move. And eventually he answers. Why did he have to answer? Why couldn't he just play some big move? You know, it, it seems like what you need to do now is save your center group, right? Make a big area with that. It looks like this is great, making two eyes. But Black could play the peep here, and then the empty triangle. And if white does not take a liberty from this right now, Black can just cut and capture the white inside. This is a classic two versus three capture race. So after black plays the peep and the empty triangle, white needs to take a liberty, and black has a tesuji here. Lined up from the fact that he had the N3 stone played, and he knew that he would have this when he played Q3. Black can play this diagonal move, and it's really, really sick. You have to do it in exactly this order, but right now this is working. It's asking to connect back, but as it asks to connect back, it gains a liberty and a potential eye. So now when black plays here, this shape is the best liberty shape for chasing those stones. If white plays on this side, then black can play this cut now. And you've all seen this kind of shape in liberty to CG problems. In this case, it becomes a bit more apparently complicated, but at the end of the day, white is dead. But white was not supposed to die, right? Like just because black does white is dead from here? Okay, it's it's savable at this moment. After this, and here, and here, white can play this move. And then black can try to expand his potential eyes. White would need to play here now. Black could play this one if he wanted. White would need to play here. And black could play here. This is just one variation. There's other variations where you can make different kinds of codes. But this is a good one where uh, Wei is dead in a, a step co. Meaning, if Black wants to win this co from here, he can't just expand his liberties over there. So Wei can tenuki. Black has to try to take a liberty from this. Then if White would just tenuki now and play Wei again, then Black can obviously capture. That means that White would need to start the co now. And if white wins this co after black spends this move, that move is relatively useless. So white could originally start the co by throwing in, that's obvious, but if black wants to start the co, he has to play a useless move to do it. So what that means in practice is that white wouldn't want to start the co right away, because if black starts the co and then white wins it, it's better. But black wouldn't want to start the co right away, because if black starts the co and then white wins it, it's worse. Right? So both players will keep this co for a long time until they're confident that they can win it and that it would be good. This kind of game is really, really difficult to control 
when there's a step co going on and another weak group, don't forget, that can continue to try to attack this and farm co-threats. And then eventually when he gets enough co-threats, he can try to kill the whole bottom right corner. That's why Shinjin's so answered. So much easier, so much more gentle. But Gu Zhihao has caught up because he managed to connect in Sente. And with hindsight, if Shinjin So had thought a bit longer before he had answered here and played this one, realizing that Black was going to play the peep if he plays his move, what a genius sequence by Gu Zhihao, then if Black does the same sort of thing, trying to get stuff in Sente, White is so much stronger, right? Even if he does the sequence I showed like this and plays here, and again, in this variation, if White answers, it would be the same thing where Black connected in Sente as in the game, but you can see the White shape in the corner is so much better. White has much better control over the side and there's no chance that Black can like play co-threats there or anything later. This way, White lost a lot and Black gets the first move to attack. Shinjin So now has to play a game where he's not leading, but he still has to take care of his group in the center. Now, usually the top professionals are very comfortable with this kind of game, but although Shinjin So just regained control of his emotions, backed off, spent some time, calmed down, you can't be that calm when you just know you've made a blunder. And it's so obvious to a player of Shinjin So's caliber, it's even obvious to me, to Shinjin So it must be like, ugly as heck to have played the empty triangle there. It's, uh, why does the shape have to look like that, you know? Shinji so plays another empty triangle. My AI tells me this one is bad. And I believe the reason is, if you just run somehow to the side, I don't know how, some, some way, take care over there, you can challenge black while you start to break their territory. When you do this method, you're saving your group, it's safer, so Shinjin So is calming down, it looks like it's safer, but you're going to have to rely on running to this area, and black is going to be gaining on the bottom side as you do so. So if you could save yourself over here, it would be better, but Shinjin So isn't in the mood to be like making some risky challenge right now, he knows he just got wrecked in the bottom right corner. And when you just get wrecked, it's hard to transition from that to, okay, let me be calm and, and make things somewhat difficult for you, challenge you slowly, that sort of thing. Very difficult. So Shinjin So is, is trying to be very um, consciously patient right now, but Gu Zhihao launches again an attack. So he's leaning on the bottom left corner, trying to gain as much power as he can so that if White runs out, all of this is going to be super solid for Black. And Shinjin So understands that's what you're trying to do, the Na Hane. And if you cut this Hane, then of course Shinjin So will get so many forcing moves in this area, Black will be wrecked. So Black needs to come back and answer anyway. But this is good for Black. When Black plays this move, it's extremely valuable. Wait, continuing to play from there, if White couldn't save them, it would make no sense. So Wei has to play over here, but Black can capture these two stones. And now, this original running move by White, which is going to run to the center and be relatively safe, it's not very safe at all. In exchange, White gets to break the bottom side, but Gu Zhihao knows, okay, yeah, you can come in down here, you can break, there's no eyes. White doesn't have any eyes when he breaks the bottom side. So Black became super strong over here. He says, hey, you can hardly run anymore. Hey, you have no eyes. I'm going to try to kill this group. That's what Gu Zhihao is saying. You may not have any territory over here, he may not have very much territory over here, but he does have a ton of offensive potential right now. The game is even. It's so crazy how the most intense kinds of situations the world champions can stay even the whole time. White plays this move. It's keeping pressure on the whole black group. Black plays this one. Keeping pressure on the whole white group. White plays this move. Black links under. If Black wouldn't link under, then this whole group could be in trouble. But even though White gets to play this move, it prevents the Black cut. Black could have cut and taken the whole bottom side. So he gets to break a ton of territory. Still no eyes. White plays this move. He has to save his group. He has to run it out. Black. A push that's forcing a diagonal. You can't run to the top side. The top side is strong. Black keeps White away from that. Hey, you have to run to the left side. You know what's on the left side? It's your group on the bottom left. 
You know what happened to that one? You didn't respond to my move earlier. That group can be weak. Junjinso has to run to the left. Gujiha chases. He has to run to the left. Gujiha chases. Normally, this kind of attacking is not very good. Because these outside moves, again, they're faced towards nothing. But Gujiha doesn't care. He is not trying to win this game solely. He's trying to kill this group. And if he doesn't kill this group, he wants to kill the bottom left corner. And if he kills neither of them, he wants to lose. It is all in right now. This is the way Gujiha is going to come back. White pushes. Black Hanes. This is the moment. This is what Gujiha has been waiting for. Now White has to handle his group in the center, or it will die. And he has to handle his group in the bottom left, or it will be attacked. He handles his group in the center. He tries the Hane here. Black plays this move. It's forcing. And he plays this move. Hey, your group in the bottom left can die if I get another move. Shinjin says, like, yeah, I can. I have to save it. But this method implies that Shinjin So has an interesting idea in his mind. You see, if we just want to save this group for the most territory, we should play like this. In comparison, when you play the kick, black can play this move. Wait, what? Clamp? Hold on. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come back, come back, come back. If white just plays here, you can see, naturally, that this area is a bit smaller than if white had played the second line slide. So if we're trying to maximize territory, and the top players do care about that like one point kind of thing, it should have been the slide. So it implied, when he played this pick, that Shinjin So wanted to play clamp. What he's trying to do is he's saying, hey, if I just save this group passively, saving the center would not be easy anyway. The only way Shinjin So can see to handle this kind of situation is to save that group and the center using his counterattacking potential. And this is the normal, like standard way to do things in general. When you have to handle the weak groups, as I explained a bunch in my video earlier, how professionals deflect powerful attacks, this is a classic situation. You're getting attacked there, you're getting attacked there. All you have to do is involve something else. Hey, I'm getting attacked, I'm getting attacked. Remember your group, buddy. That's what Shinjinso is talking about. But how does remember his group. He remembers it, and he's planned for this. He's read very carefully. Although Shinjin So can play like this, and it looks like this whole group is getting surrounded, Guja Hao has one final Tetsuji. Feel free to pause the video and see if you can find it. He plays Atari and Link Up. It's so normal. White plays here, and Guja Hao can connect underneath. If White would capture those two stones, Black could capture back. So what's happened here is just naturally white can save that stone, but black can try to kill the corner, and if white would manage to save, he can link up through the center. And just so resigns. What's happened after this, even though white can capture one time, is white still doesn't have any eyes. And he's dead in the bottom left corner. And this group is completely strong. Shinjuso tried to counterattack, but because Earlier, he gave Black this kind of enormous strength. He couldn't. There was not enough power to be able to counterattack that Black shape. And so when Gu Hao just accepted everything and said, hey, you, you want to try to counterattack me? Fine. I'm solid. I'm just going to make sure I connect, stay stable. Xin Jin So killed himself in the bottom left corner. It didn't have to die. It could have just saved with, with more territory. It was fine. And then the center group could save, but it was so hard. It was so much pressure the whole game. Gu Hao wins the Chu Zhao Lanqi World Championship with an amazing come from behind win. Five points in the opening. This was like such a huge lead that, to be honest, when I <laughs> was watching the game, these games are very late for me in the US. I went to bed at this point. I was like, oh, yeah, Shinjin said one. There's one thing left for Guja how to do, which is the challenge that Shinjinso has to make a group in the center. And he did that, and he restricted it, and he went down the entire line of play, doing everything right, finding the great Tesuji, breaking the bamboo in the corner, forcing Shinjinso to waste a move. What a victory by Guja how. And he showed, in this tournament, really good form. I'm glad I... Uh, checked out his game against Parshing Wan in the round of 16. You can check out that video if you haven't seen it yet.
Wow. <laughs> really, really nice go by Guja Hao. Really nice go by Shunjin. So after the game in the interview, Guja Hao said he both leveled up personally, and I can see that in his uh, in his go. And also he managed to play well against Shunjin So. He managed to make Shinshin So have some emotional moments, and those made him do things not as he would optimally. Shinshin So definitely, after playing clearly incorrectly in the bottom right, didn't play quite like Shinshin So. He was a bit uncalm, and you could see in the face cam that Shinshin So was very nervous throughout this whole grand final. This brings Shinshin So's World Championship Grand Final record to four and five. Which may sound not that bad. It's like, okay, yeah, he's playing against world champions. But Shinjin So usually has like an 80-90% win rate in individual games against world championships. Against world champion opponents, I mean to say. So 4 and 5 is abysmal for him. And he must be quite upset with himself. But the good news is there's another world championship final coming up soon where it's Shinjin So versus Jekka, another Chinese player. So we're going to see if Shinjin So can take revenge for this world championship loss, congratulations to Gu Hao for becoming the first Chu Lanki Cup world champion. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.